All righty. Uh, seems kind of odd, a little, you know, it's National Signing Day, and we signed one kid today. So um, I think most years, if you did that, you'd probably be a little nervous that that's, that's where you're headed. But uh, it's a new age, you know. College football has changed the landscape, the timing, our calendar, a lot of the things that have happened in college football over the last 18 months or so um, have kind of changed the, the calendar and the narrative of what is today, what was kind of the national signing day. But clearly, it was a great day for us, uh, adding DJ Campbell to the roster, heck of a player, um, another offensive lineman, seventh offensive lineman in the class, uh, really physical player, um, talented, uh, a guy who plays tackle, has the flexibility to potentially play guard. Um, so, uh, you know, for us, that was, a, that was a great get for us, another in-state offensive lineman, which was a priority for us. Uh, in this class to to kind of bolster the offense and defensive lines. Uh, and I think we did that. Um, and I think that it sets us up for a nice future of where we're headed on that front. Uh, on top of that, you know, I think since that, since kind of the last time we spoke in December, we've added, I think, four other players to our roster. Um, Jaleel Billingsley, a tight end uh, that transferred from Alabama, a kid who played really well for us, obviously. Um, uh, huge upside kid, very talented pass receiver, was a physical run blocker for us. Uh, went on a national championship run, obviously losing the national championship game, but a guy that comes from that program that we've had good success with, we're looking forward to having him. Uh, we added Isaiah Nair from uh, University of Wyoming, a uh, kid who was a fantastic receiver for them, uh, right from Arlington, um, just the classic you know, kid from, from Arlington that because of COVID, the recruiting was different, ends up going to Wyoming, has a fantastic year this past year, about 1,000 yards, 12 touchdowns, and now opportunity to kind of come back home, which is a big addition for us at the wide receiver position. Uh, Ryan Watts was a transfer from Ohio State, uh, defensive back, big physical player who we love having back in the program. And then Larry Turner Gooden, uh, a kid who announced at the All-Star game there, uh, the uh, Army All-American All-Star game, a safety physical player, uh, who we're looking forward to him as well. So those additions have been good to go along with DJ. I think that totals up, um, you know, 32 newcomers so far on our roster. And I say so far because we still potentially have some room to work with. Um, we'll see what happens as we move through coming out of spring practice. Uh, the transfer portal has created a unique dynamic right now in college football with um, – <laughs> there's there's no deadlines, there's no dates, you know, until we get to the the you know the end of summer. So uh, it's a fluid situation, not only for other rosters, but ours as well. Um, I think that that's a the 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 slippery slope that we all navigate through in you know developing, coaching our own players, but also making sure we don't have guys slide through the cracks that maybe aren't getting the attention needed that they feel like they aren't getting developed as well, but also analyzing needs on our own roster of where we can maybe fill some of those needs through the portal. Um, with that, we've got 14 guys enrolled in school uh, now, uh, new, um, which is great. They've been in our off-season program here for about three weeks. Um, you know, B.J. Allen's here. Kelvin, uh, that's, that's incorrect. He's not. B.J. Allen's here, Jaleel Billingsley's here, Dre Bledsoe's here, Terrence Brooks, Aaron Bryant, Quinn Ewers, uh, Justice Finkley, um, Jalen Gilbo, Cole Hudson, Malik Murphy, Isaiah Nair, uh, Larry Turner Gooden, and uh, Ryan Watts are all on campus now. So they'll be with us in spring practice, uh, which will be good. And then from a coaching staff perspective, I, I don't think we are able to hit on that either. We had made a few additions there. Uh, started with Tashar Choice, uh, replacing Stan Drayton, coaching the running backs. Uh, he's unbelievable amount of energy, uh, great recruiter, great technician at the position. Uh, I think this guy provides a, a lot to our staff uh, internally in what he brings from a staff perspective in, in relationship to the player, but also on the recruiting front. And then also the, the, the development of the players at the position is big. And then Brandon Marion's on board coming from Pitt, coaching the wide receivers. Another young up-and-coming coach, a guy who really thrives in the technical aspect of the game. Uh, one of the best developers of talent that I've been around. And his interview process was, was really great for me to watch how he develops the players, uh, the drill work that he does with them to get them prepared to play and play at a really high level. Uh, not to mention he's a very innovative offensive mind. He did some really good things. 
um, when he's back at William Mary and things. And so I think he'll add to that dimension with us as well. And obviously adding Gary Patterson on staff, that's kind of my special assistant um, in an area, you know, I just kind of lean back into my time at Alabama with Coach Saban. And that was not uncommon for head coaches that maybe were taking a year or two uh, to come on board at Alabama. Uh, when I was there um, my last year, I think we had five former head coaches on staff, actually six former head coaches on staff, four of which were analysts at that time. Uh, so anytime you can get somebody with a wealth of experience and knowledge, uh, you know, 21 years as a head coach, in the Big 12 Conference, in the state of Texas, just a valuable asset for us on a lot of fronts. So we're excited to have him on board as well. Well, I think that the, one of the keys is, you know, we try to pride ourselves and every player knows this. You know, we want to play the, the players that earn that opportunity to play. And uh, it's not about if you've been here four or five years or if you're a true freshman. You know, we try to make sure that the, the guys that earn it, that are the best players that give us as a, as a team the best chance to succeed, uh, will play. Naturally, the offensive line position is probably one of the more challenging positions to play early at. Um, you know, sometimes wide receiver, running back, you know, defensive back have a little easier time. Um, but this is a very talented group. And so I, I don't want to put a ceiling on any one of these seven um, or two or three that could have a potential to be a real contributor for us in the fall. Um, but whoever it is and whoever they are, they'll earn it. And but, but we're not closing the door on that. We're going to give these guys every opportunity to compete and compete at a high level. Uh, Coach Flood, as you all know, I, I think the world of him, I think he's the best coach at the offensive line position in football. Clearly, he's a, he's a tremendous recruiter. Um, but so these guys are going to get coached. They're going to get developed. And when they're ready to play and they earn that time, uh, we're going to put them on the field. Yeah, I think it's I think it's healthy to have balance on your offense, you know. And you know, I, I look back even to going into the OU game. Jordan Winnington was having a heck of a season for us. You know, he was a really critical uh, component for us on third down. Um, the guy extended drives. He was great in the slot. I thought when we lost Jordan, um, that hurt as well. So getting getting Jay Witt back healthy, adding Jaleel, adding Nair to go along with. Um, with Xavier, and then knowing what we have now in the backfield, really with with what Bijan brings, and we know that. But then we saw what Roshan Johnson's capable of, and then there's always the wild card of Keelan because Keelan is such a versatile guy. So I think now we're getting ourselves some balance here in where we want to go offensively, where you can't just hone in on one or two guys. Uh, and like I've said before, I'm excited about the young tight ends that were already here in J.T. Sanders. Uh, Gunner Helm and Juan Davis. So I think that we're, we're finding a little more balance. I think we're going to see another big step out of Marcus Washington um, to where hopefully you can't hone in. And hopefully if you try to hone in on one or two guys, we have, we have the weapons at the other spots that can, that can really hurt you and create explosive plays. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I'm sure you guys have known Gary over the years. Um, you know, I think sometimes TV paints a picture of what a guy's perception is, and Gary's a great guy. You know, I think he's really good around the office. I think he's a really good team staff guy. He's got a great deal of energy about him, um, but he sees the the game and he sees the staff and the team through the lens of a head coach. Uh, and so I think a lot of times. Um, you know, when my focus is on specific things, I can trust what he sees and we can have that dialogue. Um, like I know that guys have had for Coach Saban and, and you can have him watch specific things and, 
and be a sounding board of things to, to come back and, and look at. I think for PK, it's really the same thing. You've got a wealth of experience. You've got a guy who for 24 years was, was in Fort Worth coaching great defense and has seen a lot of offense and seen a lot of offense in our conference. Uh, and he can be a great sounding board for him. And I think the biggest thing that, that we're getting to is, you know, Gary is going to offer the advice and, and what he thinks we can, should do, whether it's personnel, whether it's scheme, whether it's game plan. Ultimately, we as a staff have to choose to say, hey, this is what we're going to do or we're going to go in this direction, and that's okay. Gary's a, a great sounding board for all of us. Um, he provides, like I said, a wealth of experience and knowledge. Also in state, you know, he knows a lot of the high school coaches. He knows a lot of the people here. So I think it's a win uh, on all fronts, and I think he and PK have really forged a great relationship um, in a short amount of time already. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, 35-36 is a, is a realistic number for us. That doesn't mean that we have to get to that number, um, but we're allotted to that number. And, again, I, I think a lot of times, and I've been in this boat before as a head coach, and you're like, well, I've got these extra spots. Let's go sign these kids on signing date. And you end up taking players that maybe you wouldn't have taken in December uh, but now it's, well, we've got these spots and you fill your roster maybe with players that aren't up to the caliber or the standard that you're looking for. So, um, you know, we'll be cognizant of that as we go through it. Um, clearly, we've got position groups that I don't particularly like the numbers at the position. Inside linebacker, for instance, I would like us to have at least one more body there just from a sheer number standpoint. Safety is a potential other number for us there. Wide receiver is a potential another another number for us there. So there are spots there that that we could fill if the right person presents himself. Um, but but I'm not just going to take a guy to fill the number. I want to make sure that player can come in here uh, and potentially have the ability to contribute to the team um, where we want to go. I think for Quinn, uh, I think it's been a good transition for him. Um, you know, he's been on a college campus for four months. Uh, naturally, when you come in and you're new, um, it takes a minute to kind of find your groove and just getting comfortable with everybody. But I see him being comfortable. I see the workouts going the way they're going. I know the guys have kind of thrown a, a couple different times now kind of on their own. And I, obviously, the guy can throw the ball. He loves throwing the ball. He loves being around the guys. And I think just being in the dorm, being kind of one of the guys again and, and being at a place that I think in his heart he kind of always wanted to be at, um, I think he's in a really good place. And so we've got work to do, and we've got to install the offense. We've been on the road uh, recruiting, so now we're just kind of getting back. But we got to get the offense going, get it installed, and, and get him comfortable, um, you know, to see how far he can go with this thing. Well, I think to go back, if you recall a year ago at this time when I got hired, we were in the midst of a pandemic. And I think, quite frankly, we kind of still are. But the rules of such were I couldn't go on the road. I couldn't go recruit. I couldn't go see any high school coaches. I couldn't go to the high schools. I, it was very difficult to connect. Uh, I was making a lot of phone calls. Uh, but this time, really the last two weeks in January, um, I made it a point to try to get to as many high schools as I could in the state of Texas. Um, I left for about one day. I went to Louisiana for one day to recruit. The other 10 days I spent in the state of Texas recruiting, whether it was Dallas, whether it was East Texas, whether it was Houston, whether it was West Texas, and getting around to the coaches. And um, you guys have probably known me enough and been around our players enough now after a year of I'm a relationship-based guy. I, I like being around people. I like connecting with people. Uh, you, you do it over the phone. You do it over FaceTime. You do it over Zoom. But there's nothing like that personal relationship of getting to know somebody, sitting in another head coach's office, watching a group workout, watching a coach run his workout in the weight room or in the indoor or on the field, going to basketball games, things of that nature that I love. I love that aspect of my job. I love going out and recruiting. And so for me, I enjoyed that. I think the reception was it was great that we were here and that we were in the state of Texas and that we were recruiting here. And um, 
you know, as much as we've talked about kind of philosophically how we recruit, um, and I know I use the number 25 because that's the, that's the typical number that you sign every year. The reality of it is if, if we sign 25 guys, you know, a good about 20 or so of those are every year are going to come from the state of Texas. And last time I checked, our jerseys say Texas on the front, not United States. And so we got to make sure that we do a great job recruiting our state and the high school coaches here are a critical component uh, to making that happen. And so developing those relationships with them, to me, um, is a key part of making that happen as we move forward. On your last game, um, I actually really want to work with that. Yep. Um, I like it. I, you know, it, it's all kind of part of the the calendar and the and the and as you go through signing day, early signing day. And you've probably seen we've got some some preferred walk-ons now that are starting to kind of commit to coming to school here. Um, like anything, we've got a tremendous product. The University of Texas is an amazing university. The city of Austin is, is, a, is a great city to come and live, um, and kids want to be part of that. They see where we're going with our program. So I think we're doing a really good job of identifying those kids that maybe um, are choosing between two schools as preferred walk-ons or maybe a, a scholarship at, a, at another institution, but with the opportunity to, to walk on here uh, is worth it. So I think we're, we're building that walk-on program in a, in a way that we're actually identifying talented kids, recruiting them, and trying to get them here as preferred walk-ons, and, and so far, so good with that. Yeah, I think the reality is you, you really should be signing, you know, four to possibly five a year. That, that, that's your, your natural kind of turnover year in and year out. Um, you know, in a perfect world for us, we have about 17 scholarship offensive linemen on our roster on a yearly basis. And so that fluctuates from year to year, especially in, in – uh, what class they're in and who's leaving and who's coming in and what you need to fill. So we felt the need that we had to sign that many in this year's class because of only signing two the year before. Uh, that was a tough situation to be in. Well, what are we going to do about it? We can only – that is what it is. Now what are we going to do? And uh, I thought we, we really put a lot of effort into identifying the players in this class on the offensive line, targeting them, and then going after them. Uh, and ultimately, you know, for me, that the, that was a home run, you know, to get those seven guys all, you know, I've said all along, big humans, right? We need big humans in our program. We need to get bigger up front, more physical up front. Um, and that part, part of that is recruiting, which I think we identified. Part of that is our off-season program in the weight room, um, kind of the, the, the mental makeup of the guys as we go through it with our own players. And so it's two parts to it, but I think we're moving in that direction to be the style of team that we want to be. That was a lot, dude. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> what was the first one again? Oh, development. Okay. So development. I, I think there's a lot of levels to it. That's probably a – I could do a clinic on it, right, for an hour, so I'm going to try to pare it down. I think, one, you have to hire coaches that have the ability and have the track record of developing players that they've had in their past. And I think if you look at our coaches – you know, and when Kyle Flood's at Rutgers and he's having first-round draft picks and award winners at Rutgers on the offensive line, clearly they weren't signing first-round picks, but he developed them into that. When you look at PK or, or Coach Choate, when they're at Boise and they're bringing those kids in at Boise and then they're developing them into first-round draft picks, second-round draft picks, that's telling me we're, we're bringing in guys that can develop players to be – they're here and we can get them to here. I think that's the first part from a coaching perspective. Two, you do have to have a strength and conditioning program that allows them to develop. And I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to piggyback two questions here. A year ago, we had to teach a lot in our, in our winter conditioning program. We had to teach our fundamentals, our techniques. We, we really felt like we had to get better at our functional mobility, right, and just the, just the, 
not being a straight line team fast, but having the ability to be functional. So we spent a lot of time there and maybe we didn't lift as much last year as clearly we are now. You know, we're lifting more now and heavier weights than we did a year ago. But part of that was because we had to get the technique right so that guys didn't get injured and so that guys could understand why they were doing what they were doing. So um, overall, I think Coach Becton has done a great job. He's got a tremendous staff with him. Um, I think the players, like anything, it takes a little time to earn the trust of the players, myself included. Uh, and through that process, I think now when I watch our guys work, the energy's different. They're not wondering what are we doing and why are we doing it, but yet coming out with the energy uh, and the camaraderie to dig into it, because it's not easy. Winter conditioning is not easy. It's hard, and it's, quite frankly, it's meant to be hard. It's meant to push you to get better. It's meant to push you to get better physically. It's, it's meant to push you to get better mentally so that you can persevere through the adversity as you face it. That ultimately carries over to the field. And so I think Coach Becton's done a great job. Um, I like the looks of our guys. I've had a chance to watch them work out here a little bit this week, and I like where we're headed on that front. Yeah, uh, the three main guys that are that are out right now that can't do the actual running portion but are limited in, in winter conditioning, obviously Troy and Jaden Alexis, both coming off of knee surgery from from last fall. Um, you know, they're they're limited in the, when they're rehabbing, but yet there are aspects that they can do. They just can't do it all. Uh, and the other one is Malik Murphy. You know, having the the that broken ankle there in the cha state championship game, he's still in the boot, so he's limited as well. Those are the three main guys. From a co quarterback's perspective, they're all in varying phases, right? HUD's going into year three in the program, uh, year two in our system. Quinn, having coming from a Ohio State and now transferring, has been in college a little bit, so a little bit of our understanding. And Malik coming right out of high school, first time on a college campus or in a different spot. And then Charles being in year two. Uh, I think the biggest thing for all these guys is to focus on what they need to do individually and not get caught up in what the guy next to him is working on or what we're working on with him, but focus on what they need to do and let us pour into them to develop them. Not everybody is gonna develop at the same pace and at the same rate, and everybody's at a different stage in their career. So trusting our history of developing quarterbacks to dive into you individually and here's what we want you to work on and make that happen. I think that's the guys that ultimately develop the quickest and develop the best because they believe in the process that they're going through, not worrying about what the other guys are going through. So it's hard to, you can probably guess what my next answer is going to be. They're all going to be at a different phase of spring practice. Every guy's got different things to work on. Ultimately over time, when we get ourselves to the first ball game come September, that we've got three, four possible guys that we feel comfortable can go into the game and manage our team and move the football. Is that going to be one? Is that going to be four? It could be two. I don't know yet. We've got a long way to go to make that happen. Um, but as long as they focus on what they need to do and not get caught up in what the others are doing or what you guys write about, what the other guys are doing or who should or who shouldn't, and just focus on themselves, that ultimately will give them the best opportunity to put themselves in the best position to have success. <laughs> uh, you know, Cowboys fans love the charge, the, the spark that you have, Randy, that rocket team. Um, how much of that like, is in his personality, and is there anything that he maybe brings to your staff and team? Oh, this guy's an energizer bunny. It's incredible. I, I don't know if he plugs himself in at night or, or what he does, but he brings it every day. And it, it's a very positive attitude. Um, it's, it's upbeat. It's confident. Um, it's demanding. Um, you know, I, I watched him work with our runners for the first time this morning, and you could feel it, and I think they can feel it from him as well. But yet he goes in the weight room, and he's lifting with them. And I think there's something about when your coach is lifting right there too, there's something about that. But uh, he provides that on the road. And I, I'll tell you this, you know, I spent a couple days with Trichard on the road, um, most notably up in the, in the Dallas region. Um, but even when I wasn't with Trichard, I can't tell you how many high school coaches 
mentioned, that's a great hire. Man, that guy, he, he, when he was at North Texas, he always came through here. Even when he was at Tech, he came through. And they said really the same thing about Brennan Marion, about the way they conducted themselves when they went into the school, how diligent they were in the recruiting process, um, which, as we know, that's a huge component to what we do. So we've got our own players that we're working on. We've got a staff that we're a part of. And then we've got the recruiting aspect of it. Um, and so we wear a lot of hats, and I think Trashard and Brennan both wear those hats really well, but the energy Trashard brings is, is kind of unmatched right now. Yeah, so Dicker, um, you know, I, I would have loved for had Dicker stayed. You know, I, I think that, um, you know, clearly that, that he's a tremendous player. He, he's performed at the very high level for us in, in, crucial, in crucial moments. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it's like making choices and, and after the season and when you have to make a decision, I just wanted to make sure he didn't make an emotional decision. Let's make sure we, we take in all the information. Let's make a really rational decision. I could agree or disagree with it. That wasn't, wasn't my choice. It was for him. And he felt good about what he was going to do. And we wish him the best of luck. I got a chance to be in Mobile yesterday and watch him kick. It was great to see him. It was great to see Josh Thompson at the Senior Bowl and, and representing the University of Texas. So, so that was fantastic. Safety, um, you know, we've got obviously a couple players returning. Um, and Jaron Thompson, Anthony Cook, both guys who have played substantial amount of football for us and feel good about where they're at. Um, clearly, B.J. Allen, Larry Turner Gooden are great additions to, to be back on board. Um, there's a potential of a couple other guys moving around, moving positions. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm not really concerned about the depth chart. I'm concerned about how far can they go with this thing, and then we'll find the right mix. We got a, we got a long time uh, till we play in September. The idea is that these guys are getting better and developing the right way within the scheme um, of where we need to go as a football team. Um, not, not, not quite frankly, not in particular. If you really watched where he came from at Pitt last year with Coach Whipple as the offensive coordinator, that scheme was probably a little more similar to what we did. A lot of the past concepts were very similar, and that's where I was able to watch the tape. You know, I, I don't, I don't particularly like having guys tell me about what they've done. I like to watch the tape of what they've done and how their players have played in the scheme of what it was. And if you watch the receivers at Pitt a year ago in a scheme that is similar to ours, um, you see the detail in the way they play. You see the competitiveness. Uh, you see the ball skills. Um, and that was probably the biggest thing that jumped out. And so now we're going through our own cut-ups. And you can that now the dialogue is coming up that this is what they did, this is how they did it. Uh, but clearly, the go-go offense, you know, is probably going to kick in some to when you start talking about Roshan and Bijan together or Keelan Robinson back there. There's some aspects of it there that um, I'm sure we'll dabble into to see if we can make it work. Well, I think I think in the end, you know, I've said this all along. I think we have a tremendous product at the University of Texas. Um, and there's a lot that goes into that. But also, I think we hired the best offensive line coach in the country when I came here. Um, I think we value the offensive linemen and in, in, in what they mean not only to an offense but to your program. I think sometimes they become the identity of your program. And I think he saw that. I think he sees opportunity. I think he sees development. I think he sees a great degree. I think he sees an opportunity to, to, for, for a, a playing career after college if he does it the right way. Um, and I think he wants to play with great players. And you start to see some of the other offensive linemen that are coming. I think he starts to see some of the defensive linemen that are, that, that are already signed to say, I want to compete against that every day because that's going to make me a better player. And I want to play next to a guy that's going to push me and make me a better player. And I want a guy at my same position that I want to compete against that's going to make me a better player. And I want to play in an offense that uh, ultimately is going to prepare me to play in the National Football League. And with all of it, 
I want to win a championship. And I think he sees a lot of those things that are potentially here. Um, now here comes the hard work that we got to make come to life. It's, it's probably starting now. I mean, I, I do it a lot in season, some. You know, I have our guys cutting different. There's certain teams I try to watch kind of as they go because we're kind of cut from the same cloth, the play caller or the coaches. Uh, but then in, in the off season comes, there's aspects of certain teams' offenses, whether it's their goal line offense or their run game or their third down or some it's the totality, the entirety of what they do offensively. And, um, we always we just say we're going fishing, you know, and we got to see what we find and, and, what, and what we catch and what fits us. There's a lot of good football plays, and there, there's a lot of ways to bake a cake. You know, ultimately we're trying to put the ball in the end zone. We're trying to win games, um, but you got to make sure that that you don't do so much that it doesn't fit what we do and it doesn't fit the foundation that we have. But ultimately we want it to fit who we are, and, and it fits our personnel. Um, you know because. You know, there's, there's teams that run the double wing tee and, and move the ball and score points. But we're not really wired like that. I haven't, last time I checked, our quarterbacks aren't built for the veer option, you know. So there's a lot that goes into it. But we try to identify certain people and certain teams, and we track them a little bit. Uh, and then we dive into it. And, and we figure out what looks best, what fits us, and what might complement what we do really well. Thanks, guys. All right, guys. Thank you.